So does Google have more power than the U.S. Constitution? I don't know. How about this story? One high school principal was suspended earlier this year for criticizing Silicon Valley and defending the principle of freedom of speech. That principal fought a battle to get his job back. He joins us to tell us exactly what happened. Next. Barton Thorne is a high school principal at Cordova High School in Tennessee. After the riot at the Capitol on January 6th, Barton Thorne noticed that some of the country's most powerful companies had begun a campaign of mass censorship. Twitter and YouTube deleted accounts they didn't like, including the president's accounts. Amazon, Google, and Apple forced Parler off the internet entirely. That's when Barton Thorne decided to deliver this video message to his students. Twitter, Facebook, Google, and Apple are so powerful, and they have unilaterally made a decision of what you can and cannot see on their platforms. Um, that's a major issue, and I want you to understand that. I want you to understand the problem that's going to face you and your generation if there is no longer a marketplace of free exchange of ideas. Every word of that is true. No one can credibly claim otherwise. It's factually correct. But for the crime of criticizing Silicon Valley, the publicly traded monopolies that control our intellectual life, for doing that, Barton Thorne was suspended by Shelby County School District. He then filed a lawsuit and was immediately reinstated. Barton Thorne is a brave man. He joins us now with his attorney, Daniel Sir. Thank you both for coming on. Mr. Thorne, first to you. Um, what was the justification for I mean, I thought we were allowed to criticize whatever we want, but criticizing billion dollar monopolies that control speech, that is now a crime in Shelby County? What did they say to you? Uh, well, thank you, Tucker, for having me. Uh, and first, I want to say I'm, I'm here as a, just a private concerned citizen, uh, yes. not in any f official capacity uh, as a principal. Um, but, you know, when we uh, when all this came out, you know, I, I give a Monday message to all of my students. I try to uh, encourage them, motivate them, challenge them to think. And this, this just seemed to be an appropriate topic. Um, and so, yeah, there was a few people that made some anonymous complaints. And, and when I uh, was, was asked about it, uh, I, I specifically asked what, uh, what was it that I said? What, what's the issue? Let's talk about it. And, and what was told to me was it really wasn't what I said. It was when I said it and the timing of it. So I never really got that answer. But uh, we were just, you know, we're just really concerned about uh, where this is going and where it's heading. Uh, that, that just a, a regular old person like me can just uh, espouse American values and what's been core to our country for, for hundreds of years. Um, and, and somehow now that's taboo and off limits. Uh, so I, we're, we're just really concerned about that and not really um, willing to lay down about this one. So I want to ask your attorney a legal question. Mr. Sir, is, is criticizing Google a fireable offense now in the United States? Of course not, Tucker. This is one of the most blatant examples of cancel culture that we have seen in our country to date. And the irony here is that Principal Thorne was telling his students about the dangers of cancel culture about the speech police that come after regular everyday people, and he's the one who ends up getting canceled. It's, I, I hope you sue these people into oblivion. I really, you don't have to comment on that, but that is my fervent hope. I'm grateful that you came on tonight. It's one of the most shocking stories I think we've ever put on this show. Thank you, both. Thanks for having us. If it can happen to him, it can happen to anyone. Amen. Godspeed. You should fight back.